Here we go. You know, it's a new part. A little bit of paint here. Blend. Blend. We had to do that, unfortunately, but that's what we gotta do. New bumper, new hood, new fender. Here we go. This is gonna be a fun one. This is 46 V. Yeah, baby. Let's do this. First, obviously, we're gonna wash them really well. Um, we're gonna wash them with water cleaner, okay? Which is the PPG water cleaner. And then we're gonna wash it with uh, Prime Wash which is uh, called Final Wipe from Finish Master. All right, let's do this. So always when you're washing, you wanna do a section at a time. Don't uh, like wet the whole hood. Don't wet the whole entire, if it's a big panel, Try not to wet the whole entire panel. And uh, always, 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 I'm, I'm using a microfiber cloth, so I'm wiping with one side and then drying, flipping it over and drying it with the other side. And uh, that's, that's been working really well for me. That's what I do. And uh, it, it works great. So that's what I recommend you do. Flip it over, right? then dry it because that way you're actually taking stuff taking stuff off the panel the raw plastic bumper we're not going to wash it with final white uh, with this degreaser because it could create static and then this stuff is highly flammable so we don't want any static but then, wouldn't be good for me. So I'm just gonna get these parts ready. Guys, as you've seen in other videos, I like to get the, the new parts sealed, then I start cleaning the car. Because these parts need a few minutes to flash off. Right now I'm just feeling to make sure that there's nothing stuck to these panels. Um, yeah, I know I'm wearing gloves, but when you feel something over the years with gloves, you learn to, uh, to see if there's anything on there. Now I'm going to give it a quick clean with the water cleaner. And basically it's just, I want to try to eliminate uh, whatever contamination that could be right so it's been hot out so if there's like a little bit of sweat or something like that from the from the prepper or even myself setting it up in here you know the water cleaner will get rid of that sweat but the but the degreaser wouldn't it's weird how that works it's like trying to clean uh, dried out coffee with thinner so it won't work completely different substances so especially with the water cleaner as well you want to make sure that you're drying it off but at the same time some people might say oh that's a waste of time to wash twice but it's almost like uh, like when you're cutting something in woodworking measure twice right cut once this wash twice or more preferably more and you've made it once unless you screw some up in here I'm just gonna quickly pull this we're gonna I use PPG uh, and Barabase and we're gonna use SG06 for this color that's what uh, I painted a, a bunch of these now, and uh, I have some spare parts that I have written down what I did, and that's gonna uh, that helped out a lot to pick out the color for this one. So 
I feel confident about it. How confident? I don't know. But uh, I feel I feel good about the color. Now, if you don't have any spare cards for this color, then I suggest that whenever you have 10 minutes um, in your day, that you do that. Do a spray out card because you need to have this handy for when the car comes. You know, try to, try to plan ahead a little bit. I get a, quite a few of these. I get probably one of these a month. I mean, not a lot, but enough that, uh, that I've done a few of them. So now I have the spray out cards for them. And now I'm able to kind of compare and see what I got and what I'm working with. I'm gonna just clean that little piece. Right. So what I'm gonna do is with my damp. So this is a little damp from cleaning everything, right? I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna go like this. So what this gun does is it does something fancy to the air and it helps to get rid of all the static that any panel has. So this works amazing, especially for raw plastic bumpers. That's where I use it most. That's where I see the biggest difference for raw plastic bumpers. Put the adhesion promoter. This is 40. Uh, let's see, oh. SUA 470 LV. Okay, and you want to put this on light. You want to kind of just mist it on, but you want to do it evenly. You don't want to put this on wet. And you go around it, make sure you get all your edges. So I do this before the fine line because this helps the fine line stick very good. Especially on a job like this that <clears throat> takes longer, takes longer to paint because it's a, it's a, a tinted clear process then you need that fine line to to hold on and I kind of spray it around to kind of to uh, kind of like wrap it around you know what I mean like it just do the outside then do a little bit on the inside to kind of wrap this this adhesion promoter around the bumper and uh, it's a good insurance don't forget your edges I gotta put some of that. Now we're gonna, while well, that flashes off, 
We're gonna jump with these guys. This might be a really long video, so forgive me for that. But I wanna try to, if somebody has this car or some, some similar car with tinted clears, I want you to feel confident that you can do it. Uh, because if I can do it, anybody can do it. Sometimes we're too scared to do things and uh, yeah, you know, from time to time I still get nervous when I get a difficult job like this one um, because a lot of things can go wrong but I, I think that you have to be confident with uh, your abilities and if you're not confident with your abilities you have to work to get comfortable with them and to get confident with them right you have to put in the work so don't expect that everything you do is going to go well you try to expect the best but kind of prepare for the work so you know when when something goes wrong when you screw something up you always have to remember most likely it won't be the last thing to go wrong so just be grateful for the learning experience and move on move on and keep trying to do the best you can so hopefully what's going to happen here is we're not going to we're going to get a really clean sealer job unless there's anything on here and we won't have to sand the sealer or denib the sealer which hopefully we don't have to I'm hoping we don't have to so we'll do that one more time here get rid of all that static if there is any so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put sealer on the um, little wipey of the hose there I'm using my uh, my um, welcome uh, slim comeback. These guns are 325 bucks. I have them on my website. They come with a cup. They come with a digital regulator for 325 bucks. You can't go wrong, baby. You can't go wrong. So I have this at 30 psi, and you want to try to lay this sealer down smooth. So that's why I'm using this gun because it does a beautiful job of laying down the sealer. And you can lay down base and clear with this gun very well. So if you're in the DIY market, if you're in the, uh, you know, you don't paint that many cars, you don't want to spend a thousand bucks for a brand new gun, this is the gun for you. And uh, it performs. It performs even here in a in a, what's it called? What am I gonna say? Even here on a on a production shop, right? That's which is where I work. This gun keeps up with the demand, and that's what I love about it. And it's very easy to clean. So I'm doing a, probably a 90% overlap, or like 85 to 90% overlap, and I want to make sure that. I'm taking my time because I want this sealer to lay down very smooth. That's what I'm saying. You need a good gun. You 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 need a you need a great gun for sealer. Because you want it to lay down very flat. Because that way, like I told you guys before, the sealer, the way that the sealer lays down will be the way that your base lays down, will be the way that your clear lays down. So it all 
pillar is the foundation. Like everything else, you need to have a good foundation. Boom. Awesome. We'll let that flash just kind of go like this. Get it out of the way a little bit. This is tight. It's tight in here. So I have this trigger pulled all the way, but it is. It's, 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 this is all the way out until it hits the gun, the trigger. I've never been so happy with a cheaper gun. I'll tell you that much. It's unreal. Now I'm gonna do that piece and then I'm gonna come fine line that. Because the fine line is gonna stick to that really nice. You hear the difference? Okay? When I go get to the edge, I let go of the trigger. So that's why you're hearing that difference of air. Because I'm I'm pulling the trigger and when I stop, I let go, right? Awesome. I'm gonna take off um take off my gloves because I can't that was close just pulled the trigger a little bit so there we go see that's looking great And we're gonna fine line this. We're still recording. We're still recording, boys and girls. Oh man, it's like what? Maybe 13 minutes in or something like that with the other video. Jeez, this is gonna be a long one. I mean, it's hot and sweaty. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some value out of it, people. Love you. Let's keep going, all right? I'm gonna just fine line this. I'm using the 3M fine line. Yeah! Gosh. I'm gonna put it right on the edge there. So I try not to pull, not to pull on the fine line. Just kind of let it, let it hang a little bit. This is the tricky part. Make sure you're pushing it down as you go along. Make sure these edges are not going to go anywhere. Something about your love. Something about your love. There's something about your love. There's something about your love, love, love. There's something about your love. See this? When you realize that this is kind of therapeutic, what you're doing here, then you start enjoying it. I think a lot of people lose the passion for painting because of the troubles around it. You know, if you got a bass bad boss or a bad working environment it's hard man i mean yeah the environment is not perfect here you know obviously my boss is not perfect obviously the company's not perfect neither am i you know so you gotta kind of work 
kind of have to choose to focus on the right things. I was talking to a friend of mine, and we haven't talked in a few months, and he said, uh, I, this guy, he's like mid-30s, I think. He goes, man, I've been thinking about you a lot. I, 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 I restarted a hobby I used to have when I was younger. And I was like, oh, cool, what's that? And he says, uh, well, I'm, st I'm, I'm doing model cars. And it was pretty sweet because he showed me, you know, and he's basically painting Hot Wheels, but a little bit, you know, like bigger. And, uh, and he said he's loving it, you know? So like, I, I found, I was very encouraged by that because I remember when I first started on this trade and how much I like painting and uh, and how much I still do like painting but sometimes I let I let the j the job you know the job um, get the best of me so you know something to think about is remember that you love painting right and uh, that's something that's gonna help you to continue your journey in this trade and to do it happily right to do it happily not to do it miserably like a lot of people I see um, it, it's it's worth it man it's worth it to enjoy what you do all right evil 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 twin game here without the gloves So remember, like I said, right? You want to kind of wrap it around so that you can get rid of any weak points. And then fill in the gap, fill in the blanks. And always look at what the gun is doing, all right? Remember that. Look at what the gun is doing because that's what's going to tell you if you need to adjust, if you need to change the gun, if you need to uh, clean the gun, if you need to put up the pressure, if you need to turn down the pressure, the way that the gun is spraying will tell you everything you need to know about what the gun is doing and what you are doing. Well, that looks great. Awesome. Okay. We'll let that flash off. I'm going to mix this base. We'll be back. All right, I'm gonna need quite a bit of paint. So I'm gonna mix 24 ounces uh, unreduced and then do the, uh, then reduce it. <sighs> Where are we? Uh, it's not 41, it's 46 V. There's a metallic one, but it's no good. Never matches. There's a tinted clear, clear one. Excuse me, and it matches. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do uh, 530 performance clear. I'm gonna select that for later. Okay, here we're gonna do 23. Okay, uh, reduction. We're going to do the uh, what PPG recommends with the T90, 492, 493, 494. I freaking hate this stuff. It ruins paint jobs can't say that enough it freaking ruins paint jobs um, unfortunately but we got we have to use it or else they wash their hands and they make us all painters look bad unfortunately okay uh, here we go one here we go okay uh, boom 448 let's go so I have a little uh, system here that um, kind of like a, like a carousel and I load the toners in right and I do this fairly quickly um, so except for when I have to replace the toners and this uh, this color takes this toner you don't know if you can see it. 
super, super, super fine. Um, it's called Liquid Metal 2. It's T4705. This thing is like 500 bucks for one of those, which is ridiculous. Unreal. Uh, but you have to pay to play. So anyways, I just set these up real quick. And then I go and do something else, which is, which I can go and wash the car while this is mixing. So this, uh, you know, it takes, pretty much just takes the amount of time that it takes me to load them up and then I walk away. The red light blinking? Yeah? I don't like putting this stuff as you can tell. I hate this stuff. So we're gonna go over that. Now, and it's so much for 393, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just tone it down a little bit. Um, because it's very hot and fume humid, so this stuff it starts going clunky, it's just, it's just a mess. But that's the way you're supposed to do it. They won't pay you. Like this, like this. Okay. Then what I like to do, I've noticed. So I'll, I'll go like this, and I won't shake it. I'll, like, I'll tumble it. I've I've realized that this paint doesn't really like shaking it. But when you tumble it like this, like this, it really likes it. Everything gets mixed really nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, base time. I'm gonna start on the hood. We're gonna do 27 PSI. I'm probably gonna have to mix more base. put it on really heavy in here because I don't really want to keep putting base in here. Just put the base once, then one coat of tinted clear. And then that's, that's all it's gonna need. Just gotta make sure you got good coverage in there. That's all. So I'm doing about 75 to 80% overlap. Trigger full pulls. Making sure I'm getting it nice, nice, nice and even. I'm 
that's why I use these guns because of how even they spray. Makes my job as a painter a lot easier. So any tool that does that, I like. base in there where you need to. Right, Miguel? So when I get fired, Miguel is going to take my job. Right? <laughs> All right. Definitely gonna need more paint. Okay. So we got a little bit of chips here. We're gonna go nice and light. And then a little bit heavier. And here we're gonna do a half smooth blend. Let the gun do the work. Good. I go the trigger, I go the trigger, I go the trigger, I go the trigger, I go the trigger. You notice how I'm angling my gun towards the repair, right? Because I don't want to get any overspray there. We're gonna have motivated painters Filipino edition soon, right? Yeah. <laughs> I keep trying to convince Miguel to have his own Filipino YouTube channel. I'm gonna blow this off real quick so I can put a new code. So the base tries faster because I that it's 492 additive. So it helps out. But I still don't like it. I hate that stuff. Everybody here hates it. I don't know. Maybe you love it, but I don't like it. Nobody likes it. So the second coat, I'm going to put it on heavy because I want, I want to get some coverage. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to mix a little bit of uh, base coat as that color and cover all your spots so it can have a smooth transition. But I don't want to run out of room, so that's the only thing. I'm sure that we can manage to get coverage. Might take a little bit more base, but that's what it's gonna take. I'm gonna take four coats instead of three, but that's what we gotta do. Turn on the, the, the heat for a little bit. So 
so this can flash off with the blowers. So in the meantime, while that's blowing and drying, I'm gonna mix some more. Okay, first coat done. We're probably gonna have to do three coats because we need some coverage. I'm spraying at 25 PSI. 27 was too high with this color. So you wanna put it on as even as possible. Since we're doing the whole front end and stuff, um, I don't only want to achieve hiding, I want to achieve coverage. So I want to make sure that I put enough base on this to completely cover it. And that way, I'll be sure to have the same finish on these parts that I have on the car. Which is why I can do all these parts off the car and not have any issues. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get coverage and, play and pay close attention to, to, uh, to the texture and the way that I'm spraying it. Still about 80% overlap, moving at a constant speed, probably about 8 to 10 inches away from the panel because I don't want any tiger stripes. Tiger stripes a lot of times are, are done by being too close to the panel, so you get a really heavy uh, spray in the middle and then on the sides of the fan pattern you get uh, a little bit of less paint therefore you see those tiger stripe looking things so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we get good coverage and no tiger stripes okay see this one's gonna be tough because i don't have a lot of room believe it or not so this one I have to make sure that I don't have to pack it or, uh, or put a wet bed. We'll see. If I achieve coverage after this coat, then I think I should be okay. But I'm a little nervous about that door just because it's so close. That's the thing with this color, it's just there's no room for air. Really no room for air. So that's why I'm being very careful with the way that I angle my gun. Here we're gonna keep doing the half moving line. I think that's gonna be it for that door. I'm gonna dry this again and uh, we'll be back for another coat. I'm gonna put another coat exactly like the way I put one, this one 
maybe just a little lighter let's check for coverage that looks pretty decent it looks pretty smooth but like I said I'm gonna put another coat on that another coat on that this looks pretty good actually um, but this is what I'm concerned about here I want to make sure that that primer spot is gone and it is so thank you Jesus control coat control coat and here is the moment of truth yeah ah uh, here see it's a little bit there so we'll put another another quick coat on this but it's coverage it's covered and uh, we managed to stay away from here which is good but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tack it with my uh with my with my microfiber cloth so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put a coat a coat on this hood right because you can see a little bit where i put the base so i want to make sure that this is more smooth and consistent all right looks good it's gonna need another coat So, so here it is. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the water cleaner, just a little damp, 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 damp. Is this water cleaner? That's not water cleaner, where's my water cleaner? There it is. Let's get this over. Okay, first I'm gonna do the hood. I'm gonna put a coat on the hood, so that's what's gonna, take the longest so we'll do that I really hope somebody gets value out of the video we're gonna do this guy just to uh, just because we've been blowing air at it so it's probably got a little bit of a, of a charge This is a 1.3. We'll <clears throat> do it 26. <clears throat> I cleaned it in between because of the it has T493, T492, so things are already kicking over inside. So I want to make sure this gun it stays fresh. I can't. That's why I do. I don't freaking like that. T493 crap. I hope they fix that problem soon. I hope so. Before it's too late. going to be all the base for coverage on the hood then we'll do a control cook after this one and then uh, and then we'll be good to go I think depends how well this lays down how well it settles I'm going to do it quickly because this has good coverage already. Okay. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang that up like that and I'm going to get my blower. I'm going to spray a little bit of water cleaner on this 
okay? Make sure it's in there. And I'm going to pack it like that. I'm not pushing hard. But try not to do one of these, like just go like this and like this. Try to go like this. Hope that makes sense. Deeper, you can see a little bit around it. You can see a little bit of the red overspray. It's not bad, which is good. This color is very fine. The good thing about uh, that expensive toner that I showed you is that it's, it's extremely fine. So the overspray that it creates, it's not that bad. So you don't have like huge pieces of metallic standing up and giving you a hard time. So, so it's easier to it's easier to to wipe it it's easier to pack it um, it's just all around easier when it comes to when it comes to the lay down of the product that's great so <clears throat> I'm gonna see if I can get away with a uh, double control coat on here. And I'm not gonna raise the, I'm not gonna drop the pressure, I'm gonna keep it. Uh, I'm gonna put it at 25. And that's what I'm gonna do for the control coat. I'm just letting the gun do the work. And I'm gonna do a double control coat, by the way. Which means you do a control coat, let it flash for a tiny little bit, and then you come back for another one. Here, pressure up a tiny little bit. We're gonna do just another coat, uh, just for, for insurance. Gosh, I'm gonna have to make more base. This is insane. But, I want the drops to turn out good, so I gotta do what I gotta do. Here, do that. Awesome. I'm gonna see if I can finish this up with whatever base I have left. Now that's looking great because the the transition of the base into the existing existing panel is going well. That's great. So that that means we'll be able to to put the we'll be able to put the the uh, tinted clear under. Uh, very nicely smooth and uh, we won't have to play around too much with it But who knows right with painting sometimes are, are, are a little bit unpredictable You can't really control everything you can try to control as much as you Can but you cannot control everything because some things are just out of your hands, right? Well, that's looking great. I love that. That gives me that gives me a lot of uh, ease. Twenty-five control coat. Angling the gun towards the repair, boys and girls. I hope you realize that. You see that, okay? Double control coat. So I just grind that up real quick, going over it another class because I want this to be very smooth you see the angling of my gun we're going left we're going towards the repair that's what you want you want to go towards the repair and right here i'm not going to do any of this stuff i'm going to let this the fan the fan the fan pattern of the gun do the work we're going to have to mix more clear i mean more base oh, i wish we were clearing already gosh but this job's this job's take patience to get them right because you don't want to redo any of this stuff okay yes this is taking a long time 
understandable, but you want to make sure you do it right, you do it once. All right. So, double control coat, 25 PSI, okay? The reason why I keep the pressure pretty high for the control coat is because I want to make sure that there's no blobs. I need this smooth, very, very smooth. So I'm going to do a double control coat. So go one pass, obviously go to the other side. And I'm probably about 15 inches, 16, I think 15 to 17 inches away. And I'm moving fast. I don't want this to be wet. I want this to be dry so I can look silky smooth. That's what we're aiming for here because if this is not smooth, then the tint of clear won't look smooth. So that's why it's very important. You kind of move fast and try to make it as even as possible. Let that splash for a couple seconds, two seconds, like that. Over. That's what a control coat is. Works really well for me. It helps a lot when it comes to the colors that are difficult to spray. It helps a ton. I'm telling you. I don't know if you could do that with other paint companies. The uh, double control coat you might not need to. This is amazing. And uh, I know with the salt, it's a coat and a half and you're done. Not with PPG though. But, you know what, I like PPG. I like spraying PPG. All right. So, I'm gonna let that flash off. I'm gonna let this flash off for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. Um, I've been drying it really nicely. So I think it should be okay. I'm gonna go mix it clear. Okay, so we're gonna mix the clear. Uh, we're gonna do 530 with the Vivid Ruby um, VM4350. I'm gonna mix. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it in here completely. This clear coat is three to one to one, okay? So we're gonna mix it in here. We're gonna mix as much as we can. So we're gonna go to the 10. And again to the ten, and then I'm going to do ECR eighty five. I'm gonna go to the 10, but I'm gonna go past the 10 a little bit because I like to over reduce this clear a little bit. It uh, works better for me that way. Okay. I'm gonna do just a little thing like this. And we're gonna need regular clear anyways, so you're not, you're not wasting this. Okay, we're gonna mix 28. See how that turns out. Okay. So you put your catalyzed and reduced clear in here. The, there's not much of the VM that goes in there, so. You can fill this up pretty good. Looks like we're gonna be pretty close. That's good. 
Oh crap, this thing thinks it's gonna mix there. Okay, we're gonna have to zero it out. Okay, we're gonna forget about that. We're gonna go with the scale. So it's calling for 31. So what I did on the last job, and I did a spare car for it that matched this car, is I cut that in half. So instead of 31, I'll do like, I'll do 16, just a little bit more than half. That's what works for me, boys and girls. Don't do anything I say. I'm not a PPG rep. I just paint a lot of these cars. And uh, the reason why I only put half, or just over half, is because that way I can apply the clear coat a little bit heavier without having to worry about because so what I've noticed with this color some of the problems sometimes is that if you put on the whole entire thing then you go and you put a heavy coat of clear coat you've gone too far so you can't go back you know what I mean so you've gone too far you've gone too dark with with this and there's no turning back when you put half of it okay what I've noticed what I've worked from me okay um, it when you put half of it you have a little more wiggle room because you can apply it on heavier okay but still not go over the edge to being too dark because sometimes this color would only need one coat but it's very hard to apply one coat of tinted clear perfectly smooth You understand? Okay. Good, I'm making sense. For once in my life. So we'll use this cap so we don't waste. Okay. And, uh, so that was 30 ounces. No, that was 28 ounces. And I mixed... Uh, how much? I mixed... Uh, 20... No, 15... Where's the ounces? Where are the ounces? Here are the ounces. 28 ounces. So I also mixed 28 ounces. So I mixed 28 ounces and I put in the computer that I'm mixing 28 ounces. And then I put, it called for 31. I put 16 of the tinted clear. Look how cool that looks. Looks like blood. I'm gonna take a picture. Oh no, now it mixed. No, now it's all mixed up. Too late. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna use uh, my welcome. I just wanna give this a little stir. So what you guys can't see is that I'm sticking my finger here at the back. That sounds weird. <laughs> um, just to, to get the clear up. Then I do one of these. And then I pull the trigger. So then I do another one just so everything gets mixed up properly. But now this is, see, it's, even this looks really dark. Um, but now I'm able, now not, now I can kind of like calm down with it. You know, I'm not like freaking out. Oh, am I gonna put too much? Because I, only, I have half of it. But what you wanna do is you wanna put it on, um, you wanna put it on even. And it might take two, I, from the, the spray out card, it's gonna take two coats, I think. Depending on how I how I spray it anyways. So and then another thing that helps is that this is not as strong. This is not as strong as if it would have the, the whole thing. So that you can actually go a little bit farther and it won't affect this as much. Am I recording? Yes. It's gonna be a long video, boys and girls. I hope you have coffee with you. Okay, we're gonna spray at 29 PSI. This is uh, HCE. This is a 1.1 that I've been trying out, but I also recommend the 1.2. So obviously, where, where you want to go as far as your overspray, right? So you see the overspray? I'm going to go as far as over here. 
but here's where you want to put it on a little bit heavier. And probably about eight inches away. But I'm, I'm putting it on not too, too heavy, but heavy enough to be consistent and to be uh, even. And obviously, you do not want to run this. Because <laughs> if you run it, you might be into problems. But see, that already looks better, right? So, but obviously you can see here, it's gonna need, it's gonna need more of this, right? But if I were to put one coat with the full amount of the tinted additive, it, it would have, we were, we've, go, we've gone too far already. So that's why I like to only put half. And then another key thing that you want to remember is you want to pay attention, you want to pay attention to the, the, the orange peel so that the orange peel that you put on here will be the same orange peel that you put over there, the same texture. That way you're going to assure that you have the same amount of material on here than on there. So the top here, obviously on the hood, I'm gonna be a little heavy. And I'm looking at the texture, I'm looking at what the gun is doing, which is very important. No matter what you're painting, no matter how you're painting it, no matter what paint company you're using, you always have to be watching what the gun is doing because that's what matters. So here, remember I have to go a little farther. So that's why I'm going a little farther with this. And I wanna make sure that I get the coverage that I need. Okay. Looking good so far. Obviously it's gonna need another coat, but that looks better already. I'm gonna do the hood first. Actually, I'm gonna do this fender first. I will do the bumper last. So you wanna keep the same distance that you had on the door so that you have no discrepancies on on the parts and on the car. This is where it gets tricky. So you want to try to go smooth. If you have to back up, do it. But what you want is you want you want it to go on smooth without any heavy spots because the heavy spots are going to look darker. So you want to make sure that you're putting this on smooth. You try to be as consistent as possible. Like I always tell you guys, it's not going to be perfect, but you want to try.
All right. Oh, I gotta do the bumper. So we'll let that flash off. For 10 minutes. And then we're gonna put another coat, but possibly a little heavier. So we can make sure that uh, we get the proper amount of coverage. And everything. You gotta be careful with the bumpers because sometimes without knowing you're closer to the bumper than you are to the other panel. So then the bumper would look darker. I mean the bumper will not match anyways, but you want to try to make it all uniform. All right. Now I'm going to do the inside. Inside only needs one coat. So one heavy coat. Nice, nice, nice coat. All right, okay, let's get ready to rumble. So I'm gonna leave this for last almost last and I'm going to go in here <clears throat> I'm going to start at the top so I can see what I'm doing now I'm going to make sure that I'm going far enough to cover your overspray it's a bit heavy So remember, looking at the texture, and you have to remember, you have to remember how you sprayed this door, okay? Because how you sprayed this door, you gotta spray that fender over there. You have to make sure it looks the same. So, always remember that. Because you need all this stuff to look the same. Cannot be rushed when you do this. It's very important. You can't be rushed. You have to take your time. If you don't take your time, then that's when things get squirrely. Looking good. Let's hope it stays that way.
Okay. Almost forgot the bumper again. do now is I got regular clear here and I'm gonna do the edges where I where there's no clear right now and that way we'll have two coats of clear on what we're supposed to have two coats of clear and we're gonna let this wash off so it will be fine that's why you need a lot of room here, right? Since this is 3,000, 5,000, so second coat of clear, we're gonna go, we're gonna go up there. Looks like that, and this is gonna help blending out that as well so let's get this thing done so now regular clear we're gonna go and clear it like it was a regular job but we're only gonna put the one coat because everybody has a lot of clear so we just need to put this one clear, kind of to seal it off. Um, that way we can polish it. Without actually taking any of the tinted clear off.
the tricky part about this job is that there's very, very little room for air. <clears throat> so you have to take your time. So I'm probably about <clears throat> eight inches away. Cruising along at a comfortable speed. You wanna get that nice, 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 nice finish. So, try to keep it consistent. Now, as I always tell you guys, this is not perfect. This job will not be perfect. It was not perfect from the factory. So, it will not be perfect now. That's something that, you know, you need to, uh, you need to realize and you need to understand. It's probably better than factory, but is it perfect? Nope, absolutely not. It's nearly impossible to get a perfect paint job. And if somebody tells you otherwise, they're lying about other things too. Yes, I know, blood, yes, I know. Just running around, you know? Pick up the gun and go. So, I'm gonna let this sit for a while before I bake it, because there's three coats of clear on there now. And I don't want any solvent pop or any funky business. So I just want to make sure that this job's going to stay shiny, going to stay beautiful. And we're not going to have any issues. The other boot is getting washed. So I can't use it. So it's going to have to go one job at a time. benefit of having such a light gun as this Carbonio is that you know you there's stuff you can do with it that you can't with other guns like you know like fake grip and holding it in all kinds of different positions that you can't with other guns because they're so heavy so that's just another advantage that I see from using these guns a little bit more for the bumper and then we'll be done
right, that's it. We're done here. Actually, we're not done here. We need the blender. We need the blender. And then we're done here. I use this blender. This blender has worked for me for years now. So it's, 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 it's been amazing. It's made by a company called Spraymax. I wish they paid me to say that, but they don't. You, so what you want to do is you want to apply it until you're happy with it. No, it's not going to look perfectly smooth, but it should look pretty smooth. When you prep it properly, 3,000, 5,000, it works very well. So what happens is it thins out the clear coat you put on it and then it melts in the existing clear coat and those 5,000 scratches and they go right in there. So that's it, we'll be back. All right, there you got it. Did some polishing on it, some denibbing. I'm happy with it. This is just polish. Right, check it out. Looking good. I'm happy with it. Now I can get detailed and delivered today. I'm surprised I even caught this car because um, it's been crazy around here. But look at the finish. It's great. Still needs to get wiped down. Okay, it's not haze. Please don't crucify me. All right. Love you guys. I hope this video is useful for somebody. Okay, love you. Uh, MotivatedPainters.com for guns and all kinds of things. All right, love you. See ya.